Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to have a go at this routing out the meadows. It's a place where I was born and bred. It's going to be on some leftover fencing wood. This is really cheap to purchase, and it routes out really nice. And for someone that's just starting off or new to this routing scroll saw game, it's ideal before you get more professional and you want to move on to the more expensive woods. As always for me, I printed out my template, stuck it down with painter's tape and literally just get carbon paper and we place that underneath and draw around it with a pencil pen. Because there is a lot of straight lines on this one, I actually put a ruler along the side and use that to draw the lines just to make them nice and straight. Once you've gone all the way around, you can remove all that, and there's our template. Nice and straight lines, obviously. And what we'll do, we'll route out all this shaded area. Take your time to shade in the area that you're going to remove, because you'll go away, come back, and before you know it, you'll start removing the inside of the E, and we want to remove all the outset lettering, as they call it. The outside inset would be the inside. And we'll go right up to this line here and then leave a white border, black border should I say, all the way around. And then we'll cut all this off the bottom and that's our little four and a half inch by 21 inch plaque. Nice and easy. The straight lines could be an issue, but we'll, we'll focus on those more. And this is just going on the side of my shed at the end of the day. So nice little practice pieces to somebody that's new to the game. Now the bits I like to use, and I've used them on all my projects, are the CNC bits. They come in a packet of 10 like this. These ones are 30 degrees, I believe. They come with red caps on, I think they're 20s. And they are just like little needles, like so. You just see that. Now they do have a Dremel size shaft on them, which is 3.175 millimeter. So they're far too small to fit a quarter inch shafted router. So you require a collet like that. And that's basically a little sleeve that the router bit will slot into like so. And then that now will fit your router. No problem. If you're using one of the Dremel attachments, you won't need that. That will fit straight into your Dremel and you're good to go. I'll use these to go around all the line work. Remember it's outset lettering, so what we do, we just go on the outside of this letter. Never route on the letter itself, because you've got that 30 degree, it's going to take that away, and it's going to take that away. So we'll work on the outside of that one, outside of that one, and then we'll come on to the, still on the outside, even though we're on the inside, if you know what I mean. And we'll go around every one of these letters, just to separate the chunky wood, the backing wood, to the letter itself. So when we come in with our larger bit, we're not going to have any dropping off, chipping off or any messes. Once we've gone round with that, I like to use these mill end bits. These are ideal for clear out because they clear the bottom plus the sides. They also fit the same collet, just slot it in exactly the same. And then we'll come in, set it to the same depth and start clearing all the background out. And if it's coming on too slowly, We'll put a bigger piece on, but I think with this wood, it'll soon chip off with this. On smaller projects, I've been known just to use that for everything. Okay, let's set it all up in the router. Use our little depth gauge, if I can find one. Like so. Basically just a scrap piece of wood. Find a depth that you're comfortable with. And once we've got the CNC bit in the router, we'll set it to that depth. And we know when we put the mill end bit, we can set it to the same depth and you're good to go. Okay, let's start routing this one out.
Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around with our CNC bit. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Once we put our mill end bit in, we can straighten that out with that. This was the hardest bit doing the full section there. I actually just did that freehand, but I've done longer pieces and you can get a piece of wood, put it on there, clamp it down. If I can just find a piece to show you, literally like this, you can clamp that down, get your router into that section there, into that hole, and basically, excuse me, I'm making a mess of this today. Put your router in there and use that as a guideline to run the full length of that piece of wood. And that would give you a nice, nice straight edge, the full length of that. But like I say, I just did mine freehand, but I have used the guide method on previous projects. Okay, so now we'll remove the CNC bit. We're done with that one. That's a 30 degree CNC bit. They're fantastic. I'm quite new to these ones. They're the blue tops. I normally use the ones with the red tops. And then we're going to put on one of our mill end bits. One of these. Find one that will fit into the space. I think we can go for the biggest one here. We've took out the areas that it would struggle with. Like there inside the A. Down in between the W. And up in between the M. We know we're not going to get right into that triangle bit there. That pointed area. So we pop this on, we've got our little depth gauge, I made one on there like so, set it to the same depth, any on these pieces here, and then we start removing all the shaded out areas. So we pop that in there like so, pop it into the router, and we'll start clearing out the background. Right, we've got all the way around there. We've managed with our CNC bit. We've gone in with our mill end bits to clear it all out. Now it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. We're gonna sand this down just to make it a little better what it is. But you get the general idea. Remember, it's only cheap fencing wood at the end. What we're gonna do next is basically cut it out now. There's our line there. Just give us that little half an inch lip at the top, bottom and the sides. I don't know if you can see it, I've also angled those corners across to go in line with those corners there, just to give a bit of shape. We'll use the bandsaw next then, cut this out, general tidy up with a bit of sandpaper, and then we'll uh, paint it. I'm gonna paint this white background with a black lettering and the black surround. Okay, that's enough sanding for me. I'm quite happy if it's got a rustic look about it. It's only going on the side of my shed, so we don't have to get too carried away. We've cut our sides out. We've done our little corners. That's just enough to get a screw in each corner to hold it on this shed. Okay, painting-wise, just painter's touch. I use these paints all the time. They're for indoor or outdoor. They work fine. So we'll paint all the background white. And then give it a little sanding over again, just to make it a little bit smoother for when the black goes on. And the black will do all the lettering and all the sides and all the fronts or whatever you.
Right, that's it. This little project's finished. We sprayed some of our seals protects and hands, little crystal clearance. Just spray a bit of that on, just to give it a nice shine. As you can see from that, lovely shine on it. Remember, it's only cheap fencing wood, so you get what you pay for, I say. But this is only going on the side of my shed, eventually, with the rest of them. So I'm quite happy with that. So there we have it. Just over 4 inches by 21 inches. The Meadows Street Sign on Fencing Wood Router Project. Thank you very much for watching.